to show our devotion to God, that we don't do certain things. And often the story of Jesus in the desert is, marks that occasion and marks that event. Oh, here we go. Just making sure I'm in the right bit. Yeah, I am, somewhere. Uh, and it marks the, that. And, and the story of Jesus in the desert um, marks that occasion. And we've already looked at Jesus turning stones into bread and rejecting that idea that uh, we need to focus on what, what God wants us to do and not be worried about our, necessarily our physical needs, but be thinking about our spiritual needs as well. And so Jesus rejected that idea. I rejected that idea and focused on God. And then we've, we've had a bit of pancake pandemonium. Look at them, they look great. Did anyone have pancakes? Anyone have pancakes? Yeah. Yeah, they're great. They're great. And, and then the second temptation that Jesus faced while he was out in the desert is that the story goes that, that Satan took him up to the highest point of the temple, sort of whizzed him up there and said, Look, if you're God's son, why don't you jump off the temple? Because scripture says that God's angels will sweep down and they'll catch you and you won't even hurt the bottom of your foot on the ground. And that must have been very tempting because, you know, Jesus is God's son. He has fantastic power and authority over all sorts of stuff. And it would have been, I'm pretty sure, really easy to, to misuse that power and authority that he had. To misuse it. And to jump off that temple, become a celeb, you know, a, a magician who can do fantastic things. And become known for that. But that would have been a misuse of his power and his authority. And do you know what? That applies to us too. We, we haven't got that power to, to jump off buildings. All right? Please don't try this at home. All right? Um, but God does, does give us gifts and talents and abilities. And it's our responsibility not to misuse them. Because God's given us those gifts and abilities for a specific purpose, to glorify him, not to make it big for ourselves. Under your, under your seats, uh, uh, on, the, on the end of every row, in the middle side here, there are lots of little, some little cards you may have spotted in there. If you're able to bend down and pick them up, if not, get somebody else to do it. Pass them down the rows so that everyone's got a little card. And I'd like to talk to each other just for a moment or two. Uh, and if you know the person sitting next to you, talk to them and say, well, what's my gift? What am I good at? What's my talent? What's my talent that God's given me? What's my ability? And I'd like you, if you get a moment sometime, to write it down there on that little card and then pledge to use it for, for God and not for, for your own selfish purposes. So have a little chat amongst yourselves for a minute or two about what your gifts are all right, talk about what you're good at, all right? And then, if you've got a pen there, write it in there now. So, and then pledge to do something for God using that talent and ability. <coughs> Give me a minute to do that. How are we doing? Have we had a little think? Have we been able to write something on our little cards? Piano, have you managed to write something on your little cards? Oh, three. Right, what are we, a talentless bunch of people here this morning? God's given us all gifts. You have? What have you written on yours? I don't have a pen. <laughs> That's incredible that you've written it on your card. I don't have a pen. Oh, oh I see. Right. Yes, Yvonne. Oh, prayer and art. Prayer and art are the gifts that God has given you. And you're pledging to use those gifts for God. Anyone else want to share what they've written on there? Be brave. Come on, I know we're like British and that, but... Let's blow our own trumpet. Yes, sir. For knowing how big the universe is. That's a fantastic gift to know how big the universe is. You've been listening to God, haven't you? Oh, all right. It's huge. Use that knowledge for good and for God. What other gifts and talents have we got? Anyone else want to share? Yes. Fantastic! What a talent, what a gift. And it's blessing people. It's blessing people. 
Richard. My friend Karen has so many gifts, she needs a bigger car. <laughs> Richard used to work for the UN in their diplomacy uh, unit. <laughs> He's often been a hostage negotiator, but always failed. <laughs> and there's one up there, Christine. Baking cakes and sweets. Baking cakes and sweets. Well done, Christine. Using for God's glory. We all have got gifts and talents that God gives us. And it's our responsibility to use them for God. And this first came to me when I was thinking about this. Whatever you do, put your whole heart into it. As if doing it for the Lord. And we're using our talents and our abilities and skills. Let's put our whole heart into it. Because actually we are serving God. And let's remember that we're serving God. We're going to sing a couple more songs. It's coming to a time of worship. And then we're going to do our final part of the talk. And final part of our... So we've been, we've been talking a little bit about this morning about Jesus being in the desert. And we've talked about stones to bread. And we've talked about jumping off the temple. I want to, to, to finish this morning by just closing it with just a little uh, mention about Jesus being tempted to worship something else other than God. And I want to ask the question to us this morning... What gets in the way of you serving the Lord completely? What gets in the way of me serving the Lord completely? And there's always something. And in that story, Jesus was tempted by power. Jesus could have become, could have become a world leader. That's what he was being offered by Satan. A world leader. And then, of course, you can do what you like. Your message can be out there. The one condition is, you give up on God. And you worship me. What a temptation to become a world leader. The most powerful political leader on the planet. And then the world could change. But the downside, of course, is God's out the picture. Now, that's, that's, sometimes we suffer from that. Not necessarily world leadership. But there are things that get in the way of us worshipping God properly, serving God properly. It might be our desire to climb the ladder at work. It might be our desire to get more money. It might be our desire for the latest bit of technology. It could be a small thing. It could be a big thing. But there are things that get in the way. And we're tempted to think more about those things than we are about what God wants us to do with our life. I won't ask who's had that thought. But I'm expecting most hands will go up. If we're honest about it. And that's a real danger. We've seen three dangers this morning. Three dangers this morning. We've seen. Oops, that's a nice verse there. Look, before we move on. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. What a fantastic verse. Jesus quotes his scripture. You notice that every time that that Jesus is tempted, he goes back to scripture. And relies on it to fend off these temptations. That's That's something good that we can learn, isn't it? Actually, let's use our Bibles. Let's use our scripture. Let's defend ourselves against those temptations of the world. By worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Do not put your Lord God to the test. You know? Those are the scriptures that actually can be very useful to us. So, very quickly, because I'm aware of our time this morning. What can we learn from what we've done this morning? Don't neglect your spiritual growth. Don't let other things get in the way like food. I know we need food. But we mustn't forget we need spiritual food too. We need to be growing. We need to be reading our Bibles. We need to be communicating with each other. Worshipping together. Let's not neglect our spiritual growth. Let's use our talents for God's service. God's given us some wonderful gifts and abilities. Let's use them. 
How can we use our talent and ability this week to honour God and to serve God? Make your dreams God's dreams. Make your ambitions, your desires, God's dreams and ambitions for you. God says to Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That's the true of us too, isn't it? God's got plans for us. Let's align our dreams with God's plans for us. And we won't fall into that trap of putting more things in our lives that are more important than God. So finally, guys, this morning, in our whistle-stop tour through the, the temptations of Jesus, this Lent season, we're in Lent. We've, some of us maybe have decided to do something different, to give up chocolate. All right, I saw a fantastic thing on Facebook. I could give up chocolate for, for Lent, but I'm no quitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I thought it was great. But, you know, we can give up silly things like that. Or we could go out and do something. Sacrifice time. And serve the Lord during Lent. More than we would normally. Do you know, I was very privileged to be uh, uh, on Friday at, at a, with 12,000 young people aged 8 to 18. At Wembley, uh, at Wembley Arena. At a, at a conference called the We Conference. It's about changing the world. Not letting the world stay the same. Let's get rid of poverty. Let's make education for every child a priority. Let's fight prejudice. And there are 12,000 young people who are already active in changing the world. And you know what? It was brilliant. But the one thing that saddened me, God was missing. God was missing. They were passionate about changing the world. How passionate are we about changing the world in God's name? And getting out there and serving. So this Lent, my challenge, guys, is let's bring the name of God to our community by doing good. By not falling to those temptations of closing in. But actually let's get out and serve the Lord in our communities. Amen.